Hi everyone. Today I'm covering for Mo and my name is Elaine and I'd like to welcome you to this practice. We started a little later today because it is November 11 as we remember those who provided us with the country and the life that we have here. So as we begin, I would like to remind you to please check your surroundings to make sure you have plenty of space in case we're flowing or stretching or reaching and you have something nearby. So I have a candle here and I'm making sure it's far away, away from me enough that I am not interrupted or let's just say keeping safe. So we're going to start out with mountain pose. And as we do mountain, the root posture of all yoga poses, I'd like to remind you to listen to your body first. Whatever you feel you wish to do, if it's more, if it's less, then it is your practice and your body is your first teacher. Whatever you see around you when you're in a live class or um, whatever I do, you can go beyond or you could do less. So as we come into mountain, let's bring our feet together and just looking down at your toes, can you lift them up and create space between them and then bring them back to the mat. Moving up to the thighs as you roll them inward like two rollers and then press your abdominal muscles back towards your spine and lift up through the heart center. And if you want to activate your arm muscles, just spread your fingers wide, reach down to the mat and move your shoulders back and down. And let's take a couple of deep breaths, mindfully filling your lungs right to the top, and then completely emptying your lungs at the bottom of your breath. Press your navel in towards your spine. Let's bring our palms together at the heart center. This hand seal is for stress relief it's acupressure, so if you know acupuncture, you're doing a little bit of that, only a modified version of it, because it's about pressing uh, two points together, such as right now our palms. Stress relief and right-left brain connection is another benefit from this hand seal. So welcome everyone, my name is Elaine. As I said, I'm covering for Mo today for this class. And I've been teaching yoga at Humber, starting at the north. It'll be 17 years next month, and it's been an awesome ride all the way. As I mentioned, listen to your body first. Let's just come into extended mountain. If you can, raise your arms, if your shoulders allow. And then let's interlace our fingers and just move our arms back and then lower the arms. And let's do a little bit of warming up. So I'm just going to draw circles with my shoulders. In yoga, we generally practice barefoot unless you have comfortable footwear that you don't feel you're sliding and you have a good grip with your mat. And let's roll our shoulders the other way. We also breathe in and out of the nose, but most important is just flowing deep breath always. So if you can't breathe in and out of the nose, you just manage however you can. So exhaling out the mouth, inhaling, it's all good, as long as it's deep. And then let's come onto our toe balls and just warm up the knee joint and the leg, drawing circles in each direction. We also try to avoid large meals before class. So if you had a big breakfast two hours ago, you're great. But within that two hours, snacks are better, such as a piece of fruit or a, a smoothie or a protein shake, something that will not disturb your practice as your body's trying to digest. And then let's just raise our arms up and tuck your thumbs in and rotate your hands. So warming up the wrist joints. 
and then let's go in the other direction. And another way to warm up is rub your palms together. Just give your face a little massage, your neck. If you can, if your hair is loose or short, you can just massage your scalp. And then let's move through the whole front of the body and the lower back. Give it a good rub. And then let's start with the left hand as we, you can either tap or rub and go all the way up and down three times. And then the other hand, starting with the left. And then let's begin right at the top of our, around the waistline area. Going all the way down to the feet and up the inside of the legs. move into a sun salutation. We're going to do it very slowly at first. So for those who are new to yoga, it will familiarize you with this very um, common and popular flow movement, the sun salutation Surya Namaskar. And for those that are familiar with it, you can just flow as much as you like and do as many as you like. So as we inhale, let's sweep our arms up. And exhale to swan dive. Now maybe your hands will just end up at your knees or shins. It does not matter. And then inhaling, coming up part way with a flat back. Then bending the knees, plant your palms and you can either step or hop. We're not quite warmed up yet, so you could just step back as we come to plank pose. Check that your middle fingers pointing straight ahead as are the wrinkles in your wrist. Body is aligned like a plank of wood, tipped on its side. Also modify to come to your knees if that feels better. And then as we lower down, hug your body with your elbows, so your elbows are in. Maybe just come down halfway, and you could always do it that way. Or go straight down to the mat. Coming up is even more fun, keeping those elbows in. And then move to your knees again if you are not already there. Curl your toes under, and as we come to downward dog, our hands are shoulder width apart. If your elbows hyperextend, just micro bend them so that your arms are a little straighter. Spread your fingers wide. Feet can be slightly apart, together. And align yourself as though you are a triangle or a pyramid. The mat is your base. Your wrist to your glutes is one side of the triangle, and your glutes to your heels, the other side of the triangle. Let's come down to our knees and forearms. So if you felt that in your hands and wrists, you can always be here with dolphin arms. Let's reach across to our elbows, bring our palms together, our stress relief hand seal again, and then curl your toes under as you lift up to dolphin, flowing with your deep breath, and then come back down to your knees, and let's move into cat stretch. So you can either be on your forearms or your hands. As we come to cat stretch, we're going to curve our spine up to the ceiling, and then lifting your tailbone, you could look forward or at your mat for cat lift or cow. And exhale to cat stretch. Inhaling to cat lift. And then let's move ourselves out of our sun salute that we modified and did it slowly. And coming up onto your toes from downward dog, bend your knees and look forward. You could step, walk, or hop to the top of your mat. Inhaling, coming up halfway. Exhale, forward fold. Did you notice now your hands are reaching a little further? And some of you may have blocks, pillows, books. You could do your fold with the props. 
then eventually you may just move them away. And now let's bend our knees and just raise your arms, but keep looking down. As you straighten your legs, arms overhead or just to the sides, and then look forward. So if you're not used to a lot of deep breathing, you may feel a little lightheaded, so you can always just take your time to come out of your inversion, whatever the inversion is. So let's flow now with our sun salutation. Inhale, sweeping the arms up. And exhale, swan dive. Inhale, coming up part way. Bend the knees, plant the palms, and step or hop to plank. Chaturanga, reverse push up. Still do it part way if that feels better for your shoulders and your elbows are flaying out. And exhale, down dog, or dolphin, or table. You now know all three. And we can just bring ourselves above our wrists now to check that we're stacking our joints and our arms. And then press back to downward dog. Let's lift one leg up, three-legged dog. And then inhale forward again. And exhale, come back. And now lift the other leg, three-legged dog. Inhale, forward to plank. And exhale back. Coming down to our knees, bring your forehead to the mat, your hips are in the air, and if you want to stretch out your arms and shoulders, slide your hands forward until your arms come off the mat. If your forehead does not reach the mat, use a block or a pillow, whatever prop you have, and then slide your arms back, and let's Come back toward our ankles so you or your heels you might be sitting on your heels and it's okay if you're not you can give your arms and shoulders a complete rest by drawing them alongside your legs as we are in child pose the universal timeout pose also known as balasana coming back to our plank and downward dog on the next exhale, come up on your toes. Bend your knees to look forward. You can hop, walk, step, or run. As we come to the top of our mat, inhale, come up part way. And exhale, forward fold. And if you don't have props, just hold on behind wherever it is you can reach on your leg. Maybe it's your calves, maybe it's your ankles. You can open up your feet part way. Some of you might be standing on your hands. So whatever you can do with straight legs. And again, we have our props, such as the highest height of your block or whatever you're using, or whatever um, height the block works for you. And eventually, you'll reach the floor, if that matters to you. For some people, it is a goal in yoga to touch their toes. And then let's come up with head and arms hanging, knees are bent, and just take your time to allow your body to adjust after the inversion that we were in for a while. And even once you're standing, still look down for a breath or two. Coming into Eagle Balancing Pose. So let's start out just by softening the knees and then cross right leg over left. Bring up the left arm. So elbow at shoulder height. The right arm comes underneath. Perhaps you're just touching the back of your hands to each other or hold on to your thumb or maybe palms come together. So if you do a lot of weightlifting sports, um, this is a really great stretch and you may just find you're here. So it's not, a, it's not a judgment at all, it's just you've got some tight muscles and it's great because you're now stretching them. And we're going to lift our right toe. So I have my right leg crossed over. You can lift your toes off the mat or maybe tuck them in behind your 
left calf. So just find yourself staring at something that isn't moving. And even if you just cross your right leg over left, you don't have to do the wrap around of your foot. Focus on your deeper breath and just find your zone. Stare at something that is stable. As we unravel, you may wish to release that supporting leg. Come up on your toes, draw a few circles. And then, so now we're going to cross left leg over right. And at this point, you can have your feet both touching the mat. The one that's crossed over can be just on your toes. Now, right arm is going to come up and left arm underneath. Bring your palms together if you can or whatever you're able to manage. Then lift your left toes. Maybe wrap your foot behind the right calf. Just find that point where you're balancing as you increase mental clarity and focus. And breathe deeply. And as you unravel, once again, release the supporting leg. Let's come to Samastitihi. As we bring our palms together, feet together, and maybe just eyes partially closed. Draw in a complete deep breath right to the top of your lungs. And then as you exhale, press your belly in toward your spine. Any last bit of condensation, carbon dioxide releasing now from your lungs. So it has been studied that deep breathing and smiling not only lengthens your life, but improves your mood. And if you're stressed, this hand seal will also help to relax you. Even if you're in a competition, a race, something really, uh, let's say, energetic, the deep breath will assist you. Let's come into triangle, trikonasana. So we're going to bend the knees and step back with the left foot, or you choose because you might have your screen located that you need to look at it. Although I'll try to describe it so you don't really need to look. Pretend you're standing on a string, front foot pointing straight ahead, back toes angling, either 45 degrees out or toward the top of your mat. You could do this against a wall as well or close to a chair. Arms are now in T position, so parallel to your mat. And then as you start to reach forward, with that front hand. Reach, reach, reach as far as you can go. Then bring your hand down. It might be your thigh. You might have it on the mat. You could also press the top of your hand against the inside of your front leg. So I'm pressing the top of my hand against my calf and ankle area. And then begin to turn to look up to the ceiling. Take your time and then raise your upper arm. As best you can tell, it's in line with your lower arm. Maybe sense a few pops in the spine. That's great, just releasing some gas bubbles. And let's add our deep breath. If you do this against a wall, you won't be thinking at all about balancing, but you will feel it a lot more as you try to bring as much of the back of your body to touch the wall as possible. And then lower your arm and look down and bend the front knee. Let's come to warrior B. So again, we have our arms in T position. Front knee is stacked over ankle. So if you're sickling in with your knees, see if you can just 
Maybe reach down and open it up. And then, exalted warrior, slide the back hand down the back leg. If you can raise your front arm and look up, some of you might be leaning back quite a distance, quite far, and some might just be slightly leaning. And then warrior B again. And let's turn on our heels and toes as we come into triangle on the other side now. So I'm just going to turn to face you. So arms in T position, and then keep your legs straight, reach, 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 reach forward, and choose where you wish to place your hand. Make sure your back toes are angled forward so that they're in line with your knee. And let's try this another way now. So I'm going to point my upper arm, I'm going to point my fingers to the mat and begin to draw a circle all the way back. And then as I raise that arm up, I'm going to look up. Keep twisting and breathing deeply. And then gently lower the arm, look down, and come to warrior B. So bend that front knee. Arms and T. And then exalted or reverse warrior. So slide your back hand down your back leg, which is straight and strong. Try to avoid bending your knee if you can. And the knee is soft. And then warrior B again. From here, let's windmill our arms to either side of our front foot. Coming into high lunge, and then we'll do our balancing act again. So come up, toes are pointing to the top of your mat for both feet. Back knee can be bent slightly, front knee stacked over ankle. And then as we reach our arms up, crescent lunge, and we can add a little pulse. Straighten front leg, slightly, then bend. Along with our deep breathing, gaze is locked on something stable. And then lower the arms and bring them in T position as we lean forward. And then just bring your hands down, step up with that back leg, and now step back. And find yourself maybe wavering as you come up to crescent lunge again. Arms reaching up and pulse if you like or just enjoy staying in crescent lunge. And then lower the arms and step up to the top of your mat. As we come into forward fold, Uttanasana. Inhale, sweep the arms up. Turning your palms out. Exhale, slowly moving forward. Hands could start out at the knees and then gently with each exhale, start to lower down a little more and a little more. Let your neck relax. So some people just do this with bent knees. And if you want to, that's great. Otherwise, eventually you'll reach your toes. Maybe you're using a prop right now. And then slowly rise up with head and arms hanging. And let's move into Sun Salutation B. Surya Namaskar B. As we inhale, sweep the arms up. And exhale, swan dive. Coming up part way, flat back. And then bend the knees, plant the palms, step or hop. Plank, modified with knees down if you like. 
reverse push up and upward dog exhale downward dog turning the left heel toward the right foot step forward with the right leg so for warrior a your feet can be open and square your hips forward back toes angled forward reach up reach out or just bring your palms to the heart center and let's take Another deep breath, mindful breath here. And then let's come back down to the mat. And reverse push up. Upward dog, elbows in. Exhale, down dog. Turning the right heel toward the left foot. Step forward with the left leg. And inhale. Reach up for our warrior A, squaring your hips forward. Strong back leg as you press your heel down into the mat. And then come back to plank. Reverse push up all the way to your mat. And coming into Sphinx. So in Sphinx, you may be lowering down or perhaps lifting up through the heart center. And as you lift up, you're going to be feeling a lovely stretch through the abdominals, extension through the, the lower back. And if you'd like to tone and strengthen your core, you could follow me now by looking down at your mat as we come into forearm plank, we're going to curl our toes under, keep your midsection strong so the core is active here, and then lift up and align your shoulders over your elbows, breathing deeply. And then moving to Sphinx again. From here, we're going to roll over to our back and just counter the extension that we were doing by hugging our knees and rocking in Apanasana. Just rocking side to side. You could either hug your knees or hold on behind your thighs. You don't even have to bend your knees. And then raise one arm and roll on top of it with your ear. Bring your other arm in front of your chest and just press through your arms to come up to sitting. As we move into open angle pose, so this is done standing at times with Prasarita Padatanasana or sitting. So we have our feet open and flexed. And then let's inhale and reach up with palms out and slowly come forward. And we could just take this one breath at a time as you pulse with each exhale. You're going to move your fingers a little further forward. And when you've reached your point of the stretch that your body says that's enough, then just relax your neck, take a few more deep breaths, and you might find, if you think about those areas that are resisting, and just think about them relaxing, that they're letting go, you may be able to slide a little further forward. Then let's just walk our, our hands to one leg and start to lean over your leg. You could also use your strap, your belt or scarf. Feeling a nice stretch, perhaps through the obliques a little bit, the side of your body. And we can even just Hold on to our ankle or wherever 
and start to raise the other arm up and over. So just increasing that stretch from the waist to the armpit. And some of you might be able to open up and bring your elbow back, shoulder back, and look at the ceiling. Then very slowly, turn again so that you're now looking down at that leg, perhaps leaning a little bit further into your fold. And slowly now let's walk to the other leg. Notice how it feels on one side compared to the other. There may be a difference, there may not be. Keeping your sitting bones rooted to your mat. And so again, you may find a cloth strap, belt, scarf, or even a towel handy here to wrap around your toe balls and then lengthen your arms by using that prop. And then let's now, so I'm holding on to my right foot with my right hand. I'm going to raise my left arm all the way up and over as I turn to look over or at the ceiling, turning my head, moving my shoulder back, feeling that stretch through the side of my body, the obliques, and then very gently look down at your leg again and very slowly come up. So let's move our legs now together, knees bent. Then open up your knees and join up the soles of your feet. Move your legs like butterfly wings, which is another name for this pose. Butterfly, cobbler, bodhikanasana. Maybe sit a little taller. Think of a string attached to your crown and it's being drawn up to the ceiling. And then if you can hold on to your feet, perhaps draw your feet closer to you, start to open them up as though you're reading a message written on the soles of your feet. Just a, a little deeper hip opener. You're probably leaning a bit forward here and that's okay. And then, this is an easier balancing pose because you're now sitting, but see if you can. So if you have two towels or two, um, straps or pieces of cloth, we're going to be holding on to our big toes, but you could use your two straps this way. If you can't grab your big toes with your peace fingers and join up, those peace fingers to your thumbs. As we come into a balancing pose that is called Lotus in Kundalini Yoga, move back and lift your feet off the mat and maybe just do a partial Lotus or full Lotus, also called spider. You may roll back and you've got enough room around you because you checked and that's okay. Give your back a little quick massage. And then let's bring our feet down again. And we're going to come on to our knees. So as we move ourselves into camel, camel can be as strong or as easy as you choose. So first of all, you can have your feet flat or toes curled under. Full camel is optional. There's a lot of work required in the quadriceps and extension of the back. Otherwise, we can just raise our arms up and then bring your hands behind you so that you're supporting the back and waist area, fingers pointing down, and then just lean back. So you may be arching quite a bit, a lot of extension in the spine, and imagine you have a wall in front of you and your thighs and belly are touching the wall 
and then your back is extending back your spine. The other option is you could raise one arm and just bring one hand, fingers on your heel, square your hips forward, and look up. So that's the other option. Or both hands. So I'm just going to go to the other side. I'm keeping it modified. And I raise my other arm. Stay on each side as long as you like. Or maybe you have both hands back. And that's your full camel pose. And then let's counter again what we were doing with our spine. And just bring your hands down, come to your forearms and place your crown on the mat as we come to rabbit. Enjoy a few deep breaths here. And then. Let's do forward fold, seated forward fold, the Shimantanasana, as we raise our arms up. And then exhaling forward, again, straps are handy. Or just hold on to your legs. So if you can hold on, so what I've seen sometimes is people are um, striving and maybe not receiving the full stretch as opposed to bringing your hands under your thighs, your calves, or your ankles, and then use that leverage to deepen your fold. Just come into it slowly. Let your neck relax. And then slide your fingers along your mat. And this is where you can reach for a pillow, um, maybe a thin blanket under your head so that you're not um, flexing your neck out of alignment too much. And as you place that pillow under your knees, it will take any pressure off the lower back so you won't feel that area as you lie on your back. Start to open up your heels, your feet to the edges of your mat. Lower your chin. Arms could just be midway between your hips and shoulders. And close your eyes and allow them to just sink back inside your head. As we focus on our Mindful breathing. By that I mean you're thinking about filling your lungs right to the top. And then empty them completely using your belly, pressing it inward until you then need to take another complete breath. As we say the following words in our own mind, I release all the muscles in my face and my neck. My chest and my back are sinking into my mat. My arms and my shoulders feel warm and heavy. I release all the muscles in my abs and my glutes. My legs and my feet are sinking into the floor. As 
as we lie here now, relaxing in Shavasana. If your mind is busy, and most of the time it is, you could just be the master of your thoughts in this moment by counting your breath. So each time you inhale and exhale, count one, then two, and go up to four, and then begin back at one again. Some people do this to 10. It's your choice as we begin. Starting to move your hands and feet, perhaps side to side or in little circles, or perhaps you wish to just stay here in Shavasana. After six minutes, your body lets go. So usually 10 or more minutes is really awesome for this pose. And if you are coming out of Shavasana, Start to draw your knees up to your chest and hug them. Maybe reach your arms up or overhead and yawn. And then rolling on top of one arm, raise it and roll on top of it with your ear as if it's a pillow. Other arm in front of your chest as you roll into it. Gently pressing up to come in cross-legged pose or stay there for a while. As you bring your palms together at the heart center, the word I'm about to say to you is to acknowledge the goodness that I know exists in everyone. And that word is namaste. Thank you for joining me. And as we continue to remember and be grateful to all those who have fought for our country.